Incidentally, despite all the discussion, the eternal question still stands. Is arithmetic mean still the right measure to summarize a result? In an earlier video, I had discussed about the different applications of mean, median and mode. In this video, we will discuss more on the applications of the different types of means. Welcome back to Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. For those who are new to this channel, I am Shreesh and on this channel, I share with you tips and tutorials just like this one to help you grow faster in your professional and personal life. In an earlier video over here, I had mentioned that people often tend to use the arithmetic mean to summarize the results of an analysis. For those who have missed it, I have linked it in the description below and the info card above. Incidentally, despite all the discussion, the eternal question still stands. Is arithmetic mean still the right measure to summarize a result? Before you feel very affirmative, consider watching this video till the end. We will discuss the different types of mean, their applications and some thumb rules on where to use them in just a moment. Alrighty then, let us consider that you have invested $100 in some investment opportunity. In the first year, it was your misfortune that your investment degrew by 21.1% and the value reduced to $78.9. Despite the loss, you decided to stay invested, thinking you will recover some of the loss. Well, lo and behold, the next year it grew by 27.6% to $100.29 from $78.9. You did recover some money. This egged you to stay invested for another year in hope that there will be some more recovery. Eventually, you pulled the plug on the investment after five years. The table depicts the amount invested initially and reinvested subsequently for five years. The last column depicts the percentage rate of returns for subsequent years. These figures came from an elementary understanding of compound interest calculation we have learnt in the seventh grade. Now, let us examine this table. If we take the arithmetic mean for 135.38 across 5 years, it comes to $27.08. In other words, theoretically, it means that you have received on an average $27.08 every year. This figure gives the average amount received per year and not the average growth rate of your investment. Now remember the words average growth rate which means the average rate at which the investment grows every year as against the average amount received per year. So, in our pursuit of obtaining the average growth rate, if we take the arithmetic average of the column of rate of returns, we get a figure of 7.56%. Using this average growth rate of 7.56% on same calculation for returns, we would end up with $143.96 at the end of 5 years like so. This is way higher than what we actually received, that is $135.38. Obviously, this average growth rate is totally erroneous. So let's first understand what is happening when we were calculating the returns based on percentage rate of returns every year. We were effectively multiplying the rate of return for each year in a cumulative manner to yield the figure of 135.38 at the end of the fifth year. Therefore, what we need to find is a single constant figure with which the initial investment needs to be multiplied for each year of the investment. This is achieved by using a geometric mean obtained by multiplying all the percentage rate of return numbers together and taking the nth root of the product of those n numbers. In our case, it is the fifth root of the five numbers. Doing so gives us the geometric mean as 1.0625 to yield the final amount. The figure also provides the average growth rate of 6.25% for the investment. So here's a quick thumb rule. Whenever we need to add several quantities to produce a total, we use the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean answers the question if all the quantities were the same value, what value would that be in order to achieve the same total? 
Similarly, whenever we need to multiply several quantities together to produce a product, we use the geometric mean. The geometric mean answers the question, if all the quantities were the same value, what value would that have to be to achieve the same product? All right. So if you have found value till now, do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to not miss more videos just like this one. Moving ahead to this next example, we have a US rental cab hailing service, Roma Incorporated, trying to ascertain a price to provide long distance rides in India. For a specific trip from point A to point B in India, the distance traveled is about 1000 kilometers. They observed that they got a fuel efficiency of 25 kilometers to a liter of gasoline during the onward journey. The return trip using the same route clocked 16 kilometers to a liter of gasoline. At prevailing prices of gasoline at 90 Indian rupees to a liter, if we take an arithmetic average of the fuel efficiency, it comes to 20.5 km to the liter. Using this average, the total cost of the journey comes to 8780 Indian rupees. Fortunately, you were working for Roma Incorporated. You analyzed this data and used another metric called the harmonic mean instead of the arithmetic mean. Harmonic mean is calculated by dividing the number of observations by the reciprocal of each number in the series. Using the harmonic mean, you observe that the cost of the return journey comes to 9231 Indian rupees instead of 8780 Indian rupees, a difference of 451 Indian rupees between the two calculations. So before we take any decision, let's understand whether this working using the harmonic mean makes any sense at all. Instead of using any of the previous methods to calculate the cost, we will calculate it based on the independent trips like so. Surprise, surprise, the calculation yields us the same figure that was obtained when we used the harmonic mean. Obviously, the calculation using the arithmetic mean is flawed. Had Romer Incorporated set the price based on the calculation using the arithmetic mean, they would have incurred a loss of 451 Indian rupees for every trip undertaken between A and B. Well, it does not stop just here. At a cumulative level, for multiple trips across different destinations, the flawed costing using the arithmetic mean would have resulted in a large monetary loss for the company. So, let's get our hands dirty to understand the working under the hood, shall we? For any trip undertaken, we must first find the total cost of the trip in terms of total fuel consumed for the distance travelled. The total distance travelled for the trip is 1000 plus 1000 which is 2000 kilometers, a constant in both directions. This point is very critical. This means we need to find a total fuel consumed for 2000 kilometers traveled. To find the fuel equivalent for the total distance traveled, we use the fuel efficiency of independent trips. The fuel efficiency is a ratio of total distance traveled in kilometers per unit liter of fuel. In this process, we flipped the ratio from distance traveled in kilometer per liter of fuel consumed to total fuel consumed in liter for total kilometers of distance traveled. This flipping is the mathematical process of taking a reciprocal. If we leave it here, we will still get the cost of the return trip. What we don't get is the average fuel consumption for the entire trip. This average consumption for the entire trip can be reused to make the calculation easy. For this, we must again flip over the fuel consumed in liter to equivalent distance traveled in kilometer per unit of fuel consumed. So effectively, we are now taking the reciprocal of the previous reciprocal. We end up with 19.51 km per liter as an average fuel consumption for the entire trip. What we effectively did in this entire process was to take the arithmetic mean of the reciprocal and then we took the reciprocal of this arithmetic mean resulting in the harmonic mean. Isn't this an easier procedure rather than going through the mathematical acrobatics of the calculation and flipping the figures twice? Note that this procedure worked since the distance traveled was the same. 
Even if it were different, we would have still employed the same technique by using the weightages for different distances. However, this is a topic for another tutorial. From all the illustrations, we observe that the harmonic mean, like the arithmetic mean, is used in averaging additive relationships. So why don't we use the arithmetic mean instead? What's the difference? The following table provides some thumb rules in employing the different types of means to find solutions to the problems that need to be addressed. Arithmetic mean is used for averaging totals in an additive context. The measuring unit will not be observed as a fraction, for example, kilometers, dollars, liters, gallons, etc. However, it has some limitations of extreme values or outliers affecting the outcome. Some common examples would be average number of cars owned, average amount spent, and so on. Geometric mean, on the other hand, is used for averaging rates, ratios, or percentages. The number will usually be treated in a multiplicative context. The measuring unit will be observed as a fraction like in case of percentage per year or so on. Due to the way it is calculated, zero and negative values render it useless. Some common examples would be averaging a growth rate. Harmonic mean is often not seen in practice except for averaging rates and ratios like the geometric mean. It is used in an additive context like the arithmetic mean. However, unlike the arithmetic mean, the measuring unit will be observed as a fraction, for example, kilometers per liter, miles per hour, etc. Zero and negative values do not permit any mathematical treatment. Here, some examples would be to calculate an average speed or average fuel efficiency. In financial context, to provide investors a better sense of the company, it is used to determine average for financial multiples such as the price to earnings ratio. Just like mean, median and mode, geometric mean and the harmonic mean are measures of central tendency. Due to the nature of their application, they are rarely used. Despite both these types of mean being a tad difficult to calculate, in comparison with the arithmetic mean, they do maintain their own significance and should not be neglected. All right. If you have found value till now and wish to extend voluntary support to the channel, you could buy me a coffee by clicking on this link in the description below. When you subscribe to the channel, it also helps support the channel. Hit the bell icon and you will not miss any future videos that get published. Alright, linked here is a video on application of measures of spread and another one that YouTube recommends based on what you like to watch. Till we meet again in the next video, stay healthy and stay peaceful.